the former Gatanga Member of Parliament, has been doing door-to-door -door campaigns seeking to unseat incumbent Ivan Skidero. He also faces stiff competition from Nairobi Senator Mike Sonko and former advisor of Prime Minister Miguna Miguna. Will he be Nairobi's second governor? Well, Peter Kenneth is in studio to tell us about his <coughs> agenda for Nairobi. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Okay, Thank now we already have people. Much. Yes, yes Karibu Sana. And, and we are happy that uh, you honored the invite. Yes. And we've already had, um, you know, people tweeting and asking, and I'll start with uh, some of those comments. Uh, I have somebody here who says, this is engineer, who says that uh, he is in full support. There is Sam Mukoro who says, my incoming governor, I fully support you. We also have Stephen who says, what will Peter Kenneth uh, next move in the next five years be if he doesn't win the election? And let me start from there because, well, for the last five years, you were very silent politically speaking. Then now you're back. So where have you been? I think people need to see that after the new constitution was enacted and the first elections were in 2013, you couldn't run for two positions as before, where you could have run for presidency and still be a member of parliament. That's what people have to realize, that we came into a new dispensation and one needed to stay out and let the team that got elected work. But I was not silent. I commented and gave opinions on any national issue. And it is there on record. You can check it on my Facebook. You can check on opinions that were published by the Standard or the Nation. I have not been silent. Mm -hmm. Is there anything think, tangible that you can say that you did while, you know, the five years? Uh, in, I built the, the nation in my own way, in my own businesses. I created employment. Mm -hmm. I was not in a hole somewhere. I was around. And uh, it also gave me time to reflect and uh, to look at things from an outside position. Remember, I had been in public service for over 15 years. So it's also good to take a break. The second thing that the last question uh, was, the last tweet, is that we must think beyond the 8th of August, mm -hmm. that there is life after election day. And most important, we must ensure that Kenya as a country survives and we don't tear or break it into pieces. Yes. OK. Um, you obviously have been doing a lot of door-to-door -door, um, uh, campaigns and basically endearing yourself to the electorate. What, are the, what is the main thing you'd say Nairobi is suffering from right now? Let me tell you, it's been an experience. And I'm happy I've gone through it. I've been to 73 wards out of the 85 wards of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And Nairobians are suffering suffering from lack of water. That is a very big problem, lack of water. I was in Matopeni yesterday in uh, Mbakasi Central, right? Mm -hmm. Later, I went to Dagureti South in the afternoon because I do two words a day. A day. Mm -hmm. Water is a serious problem. Big problem, the drainage system is done, is down. We have no sewer system. You know the traffic jams that are here, healthcare facilities are run down, city council schools, which were probably the best producing institutions in primary education, are gone. In fact, what is in Nairobi is that most of Nairobians survive through the grace. Oh, okay. Good Lord. Let's, let's talk about water now. That's where you've started. Yeah. And first of all, what is the challenge that has made us be where we are today. Why don't we have water in Nairobi? Why is it a perennial problem that never seems to go away? I don't think it's a perennial problem that cannot go away. 